how did California Feeling 2 start? Obviously, it's a sequel, sort of, to California Feeling 1. But tell me, what, were the, what was the approach or the developmental aspect of in the preparation stages of doing this, this thing? Well, Alan Boyd helped a lot on the first one, California 1. And the second one was mostly Mark and I. And John Tiven did help us a lot, too, putting together. And Rob Bonfilio. And Carol... She's great. Carol is great, our owner of, of the record company. Carol Schofield. So she commissioned a second album. Yes, she commissioned a and second album. And did she album. have any input as far as let's do this or suggestions? She has or any some, other? but I think now she has more. But at that point, she has uh, she had some, but I, I, I think it mostly was her and Mark. But what uh, there were a few mistakes on this release in the sense, I'm saying this in front, that some of the credits weren't exactly right. And that's why I hope to clarify some of it. But on, but she said that she will, she's going to do a vinyl of it, and that everything will be taken care of. It's a wonderful record. It's getting a great response. What is it about California that completely engulfs you every fucking moment? I guess. Are you grateful to be living? Is it one of those deals? I'm grateful to still be alive, but California is the whole feeling of America to me, of the West. Of that, even with all the terrible things going on and all the sadness, that some of your dreams and some of your hopes can be realized, in music, in art, in poetry, in compassion. And what I would like to see is what I did is I combined California with world peace, and with the open road, and with Walt Whitman, and with whatever I'm feeling, and I tried to even see it. And you'll, you may disagree with me, but I even see it like in Tupac Shakur and some of the rappers. I'm seeing an articulation of trying... Why would I disagree with that? I've interviewed Ice Cube I, I three said times. You, I, just said, I just said you might. I'm not... I'm, no, I'm the, I'm, I focused on you specifically. I already know about his trip from Oakland and all that sort of stuff, okay. but I'm asking you... Yeah, I, I love California. It, I felt it's a place where I could be free to express myself and where I could express my ideas. But I also, it's like being in a waltz, being in a ballet, being in a dance that I get up in the morning and I want to sing. And the little bird did look down and sang a song to me. The little bird was in California that gave me that first song. Be still, even though I felt it before I I was receiving these messages in California, these inspirations. It was the sunlight, it was the land, and even with the sadness, there were still elements of hope, but there is a, a dichotomy between this beautiful, wonderful, and how most dreams don't come true. So the dreams that you dare to, it said in The Wizard, really do come true. You know, it's a beautiful song, and I love it, but it's not quite true most people's dreams most people have adjusted dreams what adjusted dreams yeah they have you have to reality deals you blows and very few get exactly what they want that that's what, from my experience you can disagree it's just my opinion I'm gonna throw out the titles at you Helen Keller Helen Keller is a poem I wrote that Stacy Keach recorded on this album and we he did write music for it but Carol said I want it with no music to open the album, which I think turned out that her idea was better. How far back do you go with Stacy Keach? Dick Gutman, if you a want publicist, to, yeah, yes. a sweet, good friend and his wife, Gisela, introduced me to Stacy. He liked my poems. We even talked about writing songs together, and we would jam sometime. And he started recording some of my poems. So I said, would you do this? And he did it, and we put it on the album. And the poem is about Helen Keller. I was so touched by her life. I met Patty Duke later, who played her in the movie. Where'd and I, you meet Patty Duke? I, John Aston was married to her, and he became a good friend because I practiced. But weren't you in Buddhism with him? For a month or so, I did Nam Myoho Ringo. I saw you take your shoes off at a at a meeting at Cynthia Avenue, West Hollywood. You did. I saw Were you. you in it. I was I was hanging out. I was looking I for. I didn't even hold I, it. I was looking for girls. I wasn't. I, I wasn't into the religion. I didn't know you. But yet. I saw you hanging with John Aston. Yeah, so yeah. That, John this Aston. is going back 40 years, John man. Aston was one of my closest friends, but I, I finally told him, you know, they took that Gihansen, whatever they call it, they put yes. up, they took it down because I, 
I didn't believe it. And my ex-wife thought I was going nuts. She said, what are you doing? You had incense in your hand, I remember. You yeah, did the whole bit. Yeah, I, I tried it. And I, <laughs> sh- shakabuku, you know, blessings. But they were just a little too Nami orange I'm not saying it's bad and it works for a lot of people. But I got sick chanting to Okay, so that explained, okay. I'm not, I'm not upset with them, but I'm just saying that I did try it. Was Patty cool? Very cool. John was really cool, except the only thing is anytime any, anyone has a philosophy, Harvey, and they say that's the only way, which a lot of religious people do, I can't believe love could pick only one way. Because to me, and it's not pantheism, it's even reflection. When I look at the universe, love is, and music is in all things. That's what I like some of the Sufi poets. Trees, flowers experience, the stars, everything contains music and poetry. And what I want to do, and I'm starting to draw now and paint, is to bring the music out from me and try and bring it out in others, but not tell them how to do it. But each person must find their own way. My thing is about not telling you to believe what I do, but find your own stillness, your own thing within you, and and live your own tune. Uh, Question. Yes. Carl B. Wilson does your composition Rainbows. Carl B. Wilson, I love this kid. He is the son of Dennis, but in his own, he's a great singer. And he, he did Rainbows that I wrote with Carl and Dennis. And on background singing, I'll talk more about Carl, is Justin Wilson, which was Carl's son, and Matt Jardine, Al's son. And they helped me. And Rob Bonfilio, who's married to Carney Wilson, produced it and did a beautiful job and, and really did most of the tracks. Okay. Uh, and got it ready, and it's a whole new version. And Carl B. sings a beautiful vocal to me. I'm so grateful to him. He's the sweetest kid. I love him. Tracy Landecker does something called Sometimes She's Odd. Tracy Landecker is a great singer. She's got a group called Walker Brigade. I think you've met her, Harvey. And she's just a wonderful singer and a great talent and a great writer. She wrote this book, uh, and uh, she's just, she's just. Well, did you ask her to do a vocal of one of your tunes? How does that? She, she does heard, she with? heard it, and I and and John Tivin sent it to her, and she she did it, and she recorded it, and this is a killer version. It'd be great. I mean, you've heard it, Harvey. She's such a great singer. She she wrote a, a script called Tiny, and a story, and I love that. I I hope someone would make a movie out of it. And she's a very good friend of mine, along with Alan Boyd, and they're two really good friends. Okay. Of mine. Neil Innes does the song is about me. This is the song about me. Neil Innes, I believe it. We haven't met in person. We know through the phone through Mark Lynette, who I guess met him from Al Gom, some friend of mine that's in PR that's helping me with another project. And uh, I I thought it was Mark, but Al told me it was him. But I I like to give credits because people like to get their credits. So anyway. So Neil and I started talking on the phone and calling, and, we, and I sent him a lyric, and he put music to it. And I love Neil Innes. I love the Monty Python stuff. I love the Ruddles, the sweetest guy, and I think it's a great song. I'm honored and thrilled to have Neil Innes on this record, and I hope I can do more with him. And it's funny because he was worried about the credits, and because I'm, as Harvey knows, I'm a laid-back poet. If, he wanted to make sure he was properly protected and all that, but I thought it was funny like asking me something like that, which I'm the last person who would ever do anything um, like that. Who's Dylan LeBlanc? I think he's got a record down number four on, on the charts all over the world. He's a up-and-coming young singer in his 20s and the most amazing singer. Did you hand him the I Don't Have no, a John, Clue tune? Or? John Tiven is friends with him and worked with him, and somehow he consented to do a duet with me. And I mean, I'm not in his league as a singer, but I'm so honored, and I think that I may even do another song with him. And he's got a huge a record out that is on the charts. And uh, okay. Dylan LeBlanc, look for that name. But you work with things. Ralph Stevens. Well, how does that come together? Ralph Stevens is a great guy who worked with Earl Brown, you know, from Deadwood and all that. Mm-hmm. And he did songs even in his movie. He's a great composer and talent. We've been friends for years. I met him through Jackie DeShannon and Randy, her brother, years ago. Mm-hmm. But, but, Randy Myers? Yeah. Yeah, and Ralph and I stayed friends. And Ralph, I'm singing, Ralph produced this record of me, and we got some back, I want to say. And I think it's a great, it's kind of a talk-sing thing, 
and uh, and he got another fellow to help him. I'm sorry, Ralph. I'm, the name is skipping me, but you got to realize I'm aging. <laughs> okay, listen. And by the way, did, did John Tibbon bring you Ellis Hook to do Los Angeles tune? Yes, Ellis Hooks did a beautiful version of our song Los Angeles, and I I wrote that when I was going downtown Los Angeles all the time, sitting in front of the library, walking with the homeless, and I I would I sat in the middle of the night and I wrote that lyric and sent it to John Tivin and he put a beautiful Steve Cropper did an instrumental version of Little Bird. I love Steve Cropper. Tivin says now the, he sees him more when I'm in Nashville than when he's alone there. I'm really excited about that. And I tried to pay him something, he said no. Fran Kowalski, who's passed away, played keyboard on that and I wanted what a sweet guy. I, I want to give some attention to the musicians who don't get credit on this album. Maybe that people don't know. He played the keyboards, and I, I loved Fran. He was a huge fan of Little Bird and Be Still. Lucy Jones. Lucy Jones. This is a story of Lucy Jones. Five foot tall, she skin and bone. She rides a motorcycle and she rides a Jeep. She's up all night when everyone else is asleep. Wop, banana, pop. Anyway, I love this song. It was totally mentored by Brian Wilson. He didn't want any credit for it, but it was totally mentored by him. And I think he's even playing the piano, whether I'm supposed to say that or not, but Harvey, that's the truth. Okay. But he, he gave me this song and helped me and coached, you know, and, 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 and gave it to me as a gift. But I just, if you listen to this song, now I'm no great singer, but it's a lot of fun. It's a hoot, and uh, okay. it's raw. It's not even a, we didn't even master it, so. Okay, you and John Tibbon also kind of teamed up with um, When I Change My Mood or something called that. John and I are singing it as a duet, and uh, he's a great, a great singer, and he's my partner in Yo Mama, and a wonderful guy, and we co-produced the Ellis Hooks record, which I didn't tell you, which Los Angeles is also on the Ellis Hooks record, and which got a lot of airplay in Europe. A lot of airplay. Here's I, this is my favorite title on the album. I will not love you forever, because I'm tired of all that. I will love you forever. It's about time somebody at least did a full declarative statement and ran it down and said up front, it's not happening. Carl B. Wilson wrote the music, the mm -hmm, track. Mm -hmm. It's more of a spoken word, and I would say you probably won't believe it that my inspiration for that probably as God only knows. I didn't hear that. Well, if I took it to a level of a, maybe a more spiritual level, but I think as you listen to that song, it's one of my favorite tracks, and Carl B. did a great, great track with it. And the other inspiration was to try and capture in a poem these kind of feelings about love and about life that's accessible to people. I think that whole poem, Harvey, that if Carl and I sit down, I could probably make a song out of it, like a, a Beach Boy style song. But Only you, know, you could write a lyric called Lost on the Moon, considering you've never visited the place. Why did you draft Alan Boyd to, uh, to play the music and sing it? Alan Boyd, Lost on the Moon, is one of my favorite tracks. In fact, he had to tone it down. I had so much swearing in it. but. Peddlers of Utopia, away from the dawn, everything shows for what it is, who is king, queen, and pawn, like dirt, you could be swept to where the dreams are all gone. Out on the street, it's damp and it's cold, don't give a shit if you're young, don't care if you're old, there ain't nothing to lean on, and no one to hold when you're out on the streets. Ellen Boyd's voice on that, and the dark chords, I really like it. It's, it's a, it's, it was, it's about the homeless I saw, it was about Dennis at the end of his life, it was about the people that somehow part of them on the journey got lost and some found their way back through the music, some never found their way. Doesn't Lost on the Moon is a good description of a lot of people in downtown Los Angeles, downtown Chicago, downtown New York, downtown Detroit, downtown Bombay. Mm -hmm. That's my that's the origin in the, of that song. Is and there anything else you'd like to add about if you knew your, um, you know, your collaboration with P.F. Sloan? I would just like to say that this poem has brought me great honor uh, and inspiration that they picked it for Children's United Nations in Washington to read in front of 
members of the House and Senate, both parties, Hillary, Nancy Pelosi was in then I went to Washington with Goldie Hawn and Dr. Dan Siegel, the guy, uh, the great guy that believes in uh, mind, mind science, I guess, uh, mind awareness. Uh, he's got a book out, Dan, Dr. Dan Siegel. Mm -hmm. And it was a great, and I did it in front of a large audience of members of the Senate and the House, and there were other people. Jeff Daniels was on the bill, Shaka Khan, Lily Hayden, which I know you know, and it was a beautiful evening and about Children United Nation, Nations, children in third world countries and trying to bring banking to them and resources and help with medical and it was a, it's a wonderful organization and Daphne Simon brought me there. Okay, you um, you dusted off an old tune, you danced my heart around the stars that Mary Wilson of the Supremes does. Yeah, Gus Dudgeon produced the original. I loved that song. I did it, I was at A&M Records, I believe. Oh no, I think I was at Motown. Mm -hmm. I, anyway. You were a Joe Bet songwriter. Yeah, yeah, I, I might have been at Motown. I'm Anyway, I can't believe my memory. But anyway, Mary is a good friend of mine. She's the sweetest person. We wrote another song which we're looking for a melody on, but we haven't found the right one. She is such a great person, such a great soul. But she, I said, Mary, can I re-put it on this album again? And, and she owned the master, and she said, yeah. and. Uh, it was just the idea of like, in a world of Cinderella's where the slipper seldom fits, you came and softly touched me with your light. You dried up all my tears, wrote a smile upon my heart. You gave my life a beauty that will never part. You dance my heart around the stars. And she does it so beautifully. And her voice is like, she never sang that, that high on the Supremes that I know of, but she did such a beautiful job. This song gave me chills. And it was almost the theme song for uh, Cyrano, because he was an astrologer in that movie. But Bones Howes said the director's son gave the son the music with no words, but it came that close to being the theme song for Cyrano de Bergerac, the movie with and General Hannah. Paul Steele does the end of inspiration. Paul Steele is one of the great artists out of the UK, the great young artist with a great high voice and a beautiful talent. He's got a records out called April and, and Me or April and I and he's got now two and uh, he this song The End of Inspiration is that time in your life when you feel there's no inspiration there's nowhere left to turn everything is turned to black how do you get through it sometimes it feels like the end of inspiration have you felt that have other people felt that it's addressing those issues that Will the inspiration come? Will my pains get better? Will I be able to pay my rent? Will I be able to survive? Can I find some joy in this life? Will there ever not be problems? Sometimes it feels like the end of inspiration. But it kind of leads to a logical tune called Anytime USA that David Marks does. <laughs> David Marks and I were in the car going to one of his gigs. That was a Beach Boy weekend or something. So I started writing it down in the car. Anytime, anywhere, any place, USA. And before you know it, the song, and he put that great melody. And it's a fun, it's a fun song. David Marks is a great writer. He's a really good guitar player. He's a great guitar player, too, but he's also a great composer and underrated. But we did another song, which it's not on this album, but called I Fall Into the Grace, which I love that song. It's so inspirational. He's so talented. Your album concludes with My Love Lives On by Carl B. Wilson. Yes. My why life. Why did you um, end the album with that? That's one of my favorite songs with Dennis, and it was just on that California box set, uh, Made in California, yes. with a six disc or so. Carl, I love that song. It's like a total dedication song that after everything else, after all these albums, after the Beach Boys and Pet Sounds and World of Peace, and after all the world is gone and spins, my love lives on. After death, after life, my love lives on. When you feel down and life seems lost, I'll give you my best. My love lives on. Carl B. delivers it. My love lives on. And this is a message I would like to leave with people, that no matter what's happening, try and keep your love focused. Um, I may seem like I'm out of touch with the times, but I'm very in touch with the times. I'm aware of all the wars and violence and anger and hostility. But in my own small way, I want to make some kind of contribution 
to encourage other people and to be a statement for peace. I just in finishing up, I, I wanted you to talk about Mark Lynette who compiled and produced and actually mastered this recording. You've had an ongoing studio relationship. Mark Lynette is, first of all, when I didn't have a place to stay a few years ago, he offered me his place and he gave me such a rate that you never would see it at the Hilton. Uh, <laughs> and uh, was a mentor, produced albums, got me deals, and uh, and his wife Margaret and, and their son uh, Johnny and uh, Angelica, the, they, they all helped me through a really rough period in my life. And, I, and also I'd like to, can I, I know this is a tape for video, but I'd like to thank my dear friend Chip and Kathleen Rosenblum, uh, Scott Brittingham and Ella and his kids, Tommy and Poppy and all the people who have been helpful to me, and Carol and Harvey, and there's so many more I'm leaving a lot out, Brian Wilson, and all the people, Marilyn Wilson, all the people that have been good to me. I am so grateful and so blessed to be a poet and to be in California and to share this. And I'm grateful to have a good friend like you, Gary, who I'm getting to know, and Harvey to help me with this video. So that's my message for whatever time we have left. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Amen. God bless. <laughs>